You know, lately I've been thinking it's time to change things up on this show. Between Gamera and his various annoying Kennys to Korean cartoon ripoffs, it seems like I've been doing movies that infuriate me even more than usual lately. So what do you say we switch gears a little bit and do a movie that I'd actually recommend watching? Now if it makes you feel any better, I promise I'll still be an asshole. Death Machine is a 1994 British-Japanese sci-fi film that was the debut feature of director Stephen Norrington, who would later go on to direct Blade, and also League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but still, he did make Blade. Norrington was unhappy with the original cut of the film, releasing several different edits, and it was also banned in several countries citing excessive violence. Right, because God forbid a movie called Death Machine have any violence in it! Well, at least the company that made this movie is one that distributes entertainment. That's a step up from some of the movies I've done recently. The movie takes place in the near future, so considering it was made in 1994, let's say it takes place in 1997. Also, by the looks of it, it's beginning after the climax. Seriously, did they film an entire action scene and then just decide not to show it to us? And these LARPers forgot to put the L on their costumes? Very unprofessional, guys. Almost as unprofessional as this guy's renovation skills. There he is. The ultimate soldier. Really? The ultimate soldier is a malfunctioning enemy from a video game? David, he'll glitch in Overload Shutdown. What do you mean, he'll glitch? It looks like he's already glitching. Okay, you guys might want to call an ambulance, since I think that actor really hurt himself. The Ultimate Soldier here was made by a company called Chank Armaments, who were accused by the press of creating morally indefensible weapons. Because things designed to kill people need to have values, damn it! Are you trying to tell us that this was a man? A human being? Oh, definitely. A man machine. Title drop. Wait. Chank brings in a new CEO, Hayden Kale, to try and smooth things over, and I can't tell if this crowd is mad at her or just really wants her autograph. <laughs> Oh shit, did you see that? She just got hit in the face with a sound effect. Kale makes her way to Chank's company headquarters, located in beautiful downtown Blade Runner. I can't imagine anything shady going on here. Although, why is it so dark when it looks like they're under giant table lamps? So how did this report get out? There's a leak somewhere. We tried to stomp on it, but... Fuck the leak! Damn, I hope that's not the response he gives when somebody asks to go to the bathroom. Fuck the leak! Looks like it's time for Kale to get down to business. GSC has imposed me to clean under your carpets and rest assured, I suck like an Electrolux. Yes, I heard that's how you got this job. Kale recommends they shut down the Ultimate Soldier program, which was created by a weapons designer called Jack Dante. Alright, I should probably mention, several of the characters are named after horror and sci-fi movie directors. For example, this guy's name is Scott Ridley, and Porkins here is playing a character called John Carpenter. Jack Dante is obviously named after Gremlins director Joe Dante, although I don't know why they decided to change his first name to Jack. I don't know, maybe Joe didn't want his full name associated with a character who's a Thundercats fan. Kale decides to check in on Dante, who spends his days in a dark room watching cartoons and porn? Holy crap, he's me! Okay, actually Dante's played by Chucky himself, Brad Dourif, who looks like he's auditioning to play Tommy Wiseau. Who are you? Hayden Kale. I run this corporation. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, Mark. Come on, finish the line. Here's another fun fact about this movie. One of the reasons the movie was banned was because of the Jack Dante character, with censors saying he promoted psychosis, profanity, lewd behavior, and incitement to rape and murder. And my response to those censors is, of course he does! He's played by Brad Dourif! The guy can make talking about numbers sound creepy! How about a count ident? 213-95234C containing $7,852,320.27. How did you get that information? Really? You're surprised this guy's a creepy stalker? Same way I got your address, 1011 Century Plaza. Same way I could get your door code if I wanted to. Hacking! I've got all the best gear right here. Big deal. You can do all that with a cell phone now. Dante threatens to find out all of Kale's personal information, so of course she just leaves and doesn't report him or anything. And what the hell? What do my old college roommates have to do with any of this? 
I've been getting provisions. Some big goods. You ready to watch Death Machine, bruh? Cause this guy sure as hell is. These guys are planning to break into the Chank building, presumably so they can steal all of Dante's porn. The boss does not look happy with recent developments. You can't just ignore him. Watch me. Fine, either just give me your card and I'll deal with Dante and you can go home and shed your skin. Fuck you! God damn, this guy is high strung. You might want to hang out with these guys for a little bit so we can learn how to chill. He couldn't be building anything down there. Nicholson did what you're doing. You read the autopsy. Shark attack. In this fucking building? Wait, so a guy was found murdered in an office building and the official cause of death was shark attack? Okay, the implication is that Dante murdered him and then covered it up, but if the cops believe shark attack is the cause of death, he probably could have left a signed confession and a videotape of him committing the murder on top of the body and still gotten away with it. Realizing a guy getting killed by a shark in an office building is a little suspicious, Kale decides to find out more about Dante. Enter Oswald. I only watch his cartoons and porn, so try hentai. Brad Dourif pops in again after taking a break from his industrial metal band and gives Kale an offer. With weapons like mine, an authorization like yours, we could do some serious damage. Sounds like a wet dream to me. Hey, careful, lady. I think dreaming about killing people really does make this guy come. You are a hot jelly baby. Get out. Wow. God, that turns me on. Again, I don't think he's kidding, lady. Dante's obviously up to no good, so of course she just lets him go again. Meanwhile, it looks like the thugs from earlier are sneaking into the building disguised as ice cream men. Just what the hell are they after, anyway? The containment is the most secure area of the building, protecting Chank's digital soft spot, a quad matrix of Googleplectic memory coprocessors. Sure, that sounds suitably computery and valuable, I guess. Oh, and by the way, the head criminal here is named Sam Raimi. Hey, as long as one of the other guys isn't named Uva Boll, I'm okay with that. Oh, what's that? Brad Dourif hasn't been weird and creepy to enough of the cast members yet? Okay. Look, this is order straight. Don't you think that's more interesting? You know, considering Brad Dourif has a reputation as a method actor who never breaks character on set, I would love to see footage of him at the craft services table on this movie. And cell phones were really awkward in future 1994. And like a dead man's handle, you have to hold it in to keep the thing under control. What thing? Dante activates the death machine, which is apparently a first person shooter, and Ridley does not look like he wants to play. Reasonable. You're planning to slay my sweetie plus. <laughs> I don't think that was in the script. I think Brad Dourif just decided to spit there and the director was too scared to tell him not to. And he should have been. Oh, yeah. So we get our first look at the death machine. Well, kind of. What I can see if it looks like a killer blender set to frappe. Either that or the world's deadliest Sega CD game. <gasps> Well, Ridley's dead, but on the plus side, this means he won't go on to direct that Robin Hood movie with Russell Crowe. This is your problem. Oh man, don't tell me there was another shark attack! Kale gets scared when Dante shows up again, although considering she had a gun earlier, she could just shoot him. I'm just saying. Or hey, just tell him he's fired. I'm sure he'll take the news well. God, that was stupid! Russ, Ridley's dead. I'm in charge. You're fired. I am. Very disappointed. Man, who would have guessed he'd be the unstable type? Drop it. Oh, thank God, the criminals are here. The thieves need their codes to access the building, but first they need to find out about their tastes in movies. Did you ever see that movie, Scarface? Brad Dourif saw it. It was okay, but he thought Pacino's performance was a little subdued. All right, time to steal the Giga Google whatever the fuck it is they're after. They better hurry, though. These guys have to be goons in a final fight game later. Dourif tricks the thugs into breaking into his workshop, and I think he's now auditioning to play Dr. Insano. Surprise! <laughs> I don't have a joke here. I just want to show as much of Brad Dourif's performance as possible. You should have come in fancy dress. 
Holy crap, the death machine just killed that guy! I think. The editing makes it a little hard to tell what's going on. Well, that does it. Dante is definitely not getting his severance package now. Breaking news flash, there is a psycho death bot on the loose. Are you referring to the death machine or to you? There is, however, a way out. All it takes is for Kale to agree to interface with me on a regular basis. Nah, I wouldn't do that if I were you, Kale. Dante looks like the kind of guy who considers female circumcision to be a type of foreplay. The survivors look for a way out of the building while being stalked by the death machine, so for the rest of the movie, it's like a combination of Alien and Die Hard. And now that I say that out loud, I'm wondering how the hell it took somebody until 1994 to make that. They plant some explosives to trip up the death machine, but they still take time out for a little character development. Once we got to the core, we're gonna pile everything right up into the middle of that vault, and then blow the shit out of it. How are you gonna blow up the money? Strike a blow for humanitarian causes. Put as many people like you out of business as we can. Great, so these guys are like Occupy Blade Runner. I'm not the armorator around here. Neither are we, honey. Blanks? That's right. Not a live round between us. But you have explosives. So, what, you're following Batman weapons rules then? Porkins does not look pleased with the situation. Time to change the game plan, tree huggers. Why did you leave that lying around? Wait, so you guys did bring a gun with bullets then? Great, so not only are you terrible activists, you're also a bunch of damn liars too. Oh man, I am so writing an angry blog post about this when I get home. Look on the bright side, it should be easy to escape the building if all you have to do is take the elevator. Things take a turn for the worse when the death machine shows up again, and I still can't really tell what it looks like other than it's really stabby and it might be Truckosaurus. I am really disappointed in Porkins here. He was in hardware. He should know how to deal with killer robots. I can hold it. Pull up! No, I'm all right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you always use the stairs in an emergency. What are you looking at? Look. We didn't expect trouble, you know? We just wanted to break into a highly secure weapons factory. We didn't know there'd be trouble. Speaking of which, if this is a place that designs weapons, shouldn't there be weapons around? Oh, well, never mind. I guess they just have these leftover Star Trek pods. This is Chang's weapon of the future. You take an injured war vet, pump up his violent nature and program him with knowledge of every weapon and fighting skill you can think of. Okay, so Chang's secret weapon is Robocop. That is, if he was created by Trent Reznor. What do we do now? Call the syndicators. Call the networks. 911, call now. Yeah, it's 1994. You'll just get William Shatner if you call that number. No time for that, though. We gotta watch some of Brad Dourif's home movies. Besides that, you little freak, I'm gonna cut your eye off. How does he know where we are? Well, at least now I know why Kale didn't shoot him earlier. If she did, his soul would just get transferred into that sex doll. He also lets them see the plans for the death machine, but even then the movie won't let us get a good look at it. I wanna talk to Kale alone. Yeah? Go fax yourself. Very funny! How smart are you gonna be when the war beast chews your head off? Wait a second, war beast? No, 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 the movie's called Death Machine, so I'm calling it a death machine, okay? So in order to fight the death machine, they decide to turn Raimi into a Robocop. I don't know if this will stop the death machine, but it should still be better than the Robocop remake. Careful out there. Oh, wait a minute, I got something to say. I'll be back. Wrong movie, asshole! Besides, considering what happens next, he should have said, I am interfaced! So what's he like now that he's the ultimate killing machine? <sighs> yeah, he doesn't stand a chance. And neither does this guy, apparently. I want to talk to you. You are tearing me apart, Kale! What do you want to talk about? Parallel processing. Two units interfacing simultaneously yeah right dante everybody knows you can only interface for like two minutes tops oh! how does that feel i have a better question why did you leave without killing him just now 
They're found by the death machine again, and I'm getting a better idea of what it looks like now. It kinda looks like a rejected ED-209, which is appropriate if they have a Robocop program. And I'm not liking that the killer robot effects are actually pretty convincing. I demand that the effects in the movies I review never rise above gamma levels, dammit. And where the hell is Robo Bro? No! What do you mean, no? Do you want this thing dead or not? Okay, so that was surprisingly easy. So, can they escape now? Follow me! And do not argue! Okay, look, I don't care if you are the ultimate soldier, you're still not gonna out crazy Brad Dourif, so don't even try. Kratos here seems to be holding up pretty well considering he got stabbed in the leg and shot earlier. Did they find a power-up or something? Hmm, this is giving me serious flashbacks to Gunhead. The main difference being that this movie's actually entertaining. Service hatch! Our exit! To the hoist. Does that suit come with an indoor voice setting? They try to open the service hatch to escape, but surprise, the death machine ain't dead yet. Even though I still don't really know what it looks like, I definitely wouldn't want it anywhere near me. I... Shoryuken! Shoryuken? No, no, no. If you're gonna use a line from a video game, it should be this one. <laughs> It's hard to tell if they're having any effect on it, but thankfully the death machine comes with its own life meter. And hey, if shooting doesn't work, just punch the fuck out of it. Seriously though, you guys should probably get out of there. You lose. My only regret is not bringing more guns. Ugh. Looks like it's down to not Ripley and not Robocop, but how the hell are they supposed to stop this thing? Is this like in a video game where you need to figure out some sort of puzzle to defeat the boss? But sure, just try using the elevator again. That worked out so well last time. What the fuck is going on? You made it out of the building, now for the love of God get out of there! Or hey, maybe this friendly police officer can help. On the floor! Better call reinforcements! You better shut the fuck up! This is Unit 257. No, never mind. Judging by his line delivery, he's a robot too. Holy donuts! Yeah, nice last words. I'm sure they'll look great on your tombstone. And what the hell does it take to kill this thing? Did Dante make it out of adamantium? No, no, don't go back inside the building, you just came from there! Blowing it up didn't work before, but this time when they blow it up, it also doesn't work. But when they blow it up a third time, it works on its hand, I guess? But there is one thing that can stop the death machine, and that's Brad Dourif being awesomely creepy again. You should've run away when you had the chance. Why didn't you just go away? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll do the references to other movies, okay? And if you have any bullets left, now would be a really good time to kill this guy. Download it, Jack. You can interface with the motherboard. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I just invented this new move I call a Grima Worm Tongue. First, I spread open your butt cheeks, and then I take my... Huh? What the hell? Oh, you cock tease! Show this to the cops. What's going on? I'm leaving you, Jack. Again, kill him! Or just leave him with the robot, which for some reason you haven't turned off yet. Don't leave me in here. <laughs> yeah, fuck Denouements. We're ending the movie there. So that's Death Machine. And like I said at the beginning, I actually recommend this one. This is a good example of an unjustly overlooked film that deserves to be a cult classic. Death Machine is exactly what it sets out to be, an entertaining B-movie. It's stylish, uses its low budget well, and it's got a reliably batshit performance from Brad Dourif. Not only that, but it's surprisingly well directed for a first feature, and it has a female lead that manages to show some vulnerability while still being tough and competent. To my knowledge, the preferred director's cut of the film still hasn't gotten a proper release in North America, but if you can get your hands on a copy, I say check this one out. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.
We're gonna need a bandage or something here. 